Therapeutic inertia is a really big problem, and that is because it's often easier to do nothing than to do something. So to overcome therapeutic inertia really requires a lot of effort. I see patients that come in on suboptimal regimens, either not the correct dose, not the therapeutic dose, or not optimized, you know, not on the medications that would best suit them. Um, that is a very, very common occurrence. Eliminating therapeutic inertia means that we get a person to goal uh, quicker, that we're making sure we're identifying any barriers that that individual has, um, and then making sure that we're, we're addressing whatever that need is to get the person to goal. And so a lot of times when I think about the pharmacist's role, uh, for conditions like diabetes that require a lot of medication, we want to make sure that the person is taking the correct medication, that they're on the correct dose, uh, and that they're not having any issues or side effects as a result of that that could then cause uh, a barrier for them getting to goal. That inertia may be that we need to go in and look at their lab work and maybe actually scale them back on their insulin dosing and see if we can get them on one of these newer medications to, to really get things optimized and, and on those correct doses work with. Uh, sometimes it's with the insurance, the prior authorization process. Unfortunately, we have to deal with that a lot, but, but really making sure that they get on that correct medication dose um, to get them to where they're under better control. So as a pharmacist, when I think about eliminating therapeutic in inertia, um, ideally it would be to have very straightforward, um, readily available access to reliable and credible information uh, for the prescriber so that in turn they can match that clinical knowledge and evidence-based medicine to the patient sitting in front of them. The, a lot of the physicians and uh, the rural clinics uh, have prescribed medications that tend to be older therapies or under uh, underutilizing the medications and not able to keep the patient properly controlled for for diabetes. I think therapeutic inertia um, kind of starts when they, they get that diabetes diagnosis. They could have just been going in for a routine checkup, their A1C comes back and their doctor's like, hey, you have diabetes, let's start you're on this medicine. Or, hey, you've had diabetes for a while, but now we're gonna switch you to injectables and they come to your pharmacy to pick it up, especially being in a community pharmacy setting. And you're kind of the person to be like, okay, we need to actually take the time to sit down and properly counsel this patient. Otherwise, you know, that, that therapeutic inertia is gonna start there and they're not gonna be able to ever get over that if they don't see the benefit from taking these medicines. As a pharmacist, I see the elimination of therapeutic inertia really involving timely treatments in terms of adjustments to the diabetes regimen, whether that's a dose increase. So say for example, somebody is starting on um, an SGLT2 inhibitor, making that making sure the dose adjustment happens. Whether a patient is started on a GLP-1 agonist, making sure that dose titration happens in a timely manner and insulin adjustments are made in a timely manner. Not waiting three months to the next visit, office visit to make adjustments.